What's up, everybody? It's Matt Powell with Promac.com. I'm here with Jordan Nyberg. How's it going, guys? And we want to talk to you about something today. Obviously, we've been out at the shooting range, shooting all day, and want to talk to you about in Promac what we call the IFS, which is an integrated fighting stance. The idea behind the integrated fighting stance is, is that biomechanically, kinematically, physiologically, everything that you're going to put in your hands as a weapon is going to fit in this stance. What we don't want to have is, is we don't want to have a stance that is one for fist fighting, one for a knife, and then one for a pistol. Because now what we're doing is, is we're creating these new neuro pathways that we're constantly having to relearn, and we have to repeat it over and over and over again. So if you do a lot of striking, but you don't have a lot of shooting, then you're gonna have that hesitancy and that time delay and actually getting to that when you actually need it. So that's why we wanna have one stance, and then we wanna be able to put the weapon into that stance and continue that stance. So that's what we're gonna be covering today and hope you like the video. All right, so let's talk about the empty hand portion of the IFS. Now you'll have to forgive a little bit of wind if you hear it. We're out here in the beautiful deserts of Albuquerque and we get a lot of wind. It's been a windy day today. No reason not to film or shoot, right? So what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna come back to the feet that's the first place. Why is it the first place? Because that's friction with the ground. So we're going to go ahead and take the feet. We're going to put them even with the shoulders. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to bend slightly at the knees. The reason that we're going to do that is because if we're ramrod straight or we've got some crazy kung fu thing going on or whatever it is, we're going to have unstable equilibrium. As everybody knows, you have your center mass creates a line of gravity into a load-bearing area, which is where the feet are. So wherever the feet move, it's where that center mass needs to be going to, to be able to create that load. This is the load-bearing area, which is the feet. Human equilibrium is available at the shop, Promic.com. Nice plug. So now what we're going to do is, we're gonna tilt the hips just slightly, and have the ass just a little bit out. The reason that we're going to do that is, is because we don't wanna bend over at the back. We wanna bend at the hips, so go ahead and turn towards me. We want to, if, if he has to reach out to grab me, he doesn't want to be doing it by, go ahead and bend over like this and all that. He wants to bend slightly at the hips and use that to increase the distance of the hand. So the next thing that we're going to do is, go ahead and just straighten it up just a little bit right there. We're going to have the elbows tucked and we're going to bring the hands up right into here. So what we're doing right in here is, and you'll notice what I'm trying to do is I'm going from the feet to the knees, to the hips, to the back, up into the elbow so it's a little bit easier for you. So come in a little bit on the camera. So now we're gonna focus from the hips up. So we're gonna have these, uh, the elbows tucked. That way if a strike is coming in or a push is coming in, he's able to protect it with the elbow. It's gonna have the center line facing me. Now what I want you to do is, is I want you to take a slight step back. And the reason I want you to do that is because now we have a little bit of a tilted area for equilibrium. So what happens is, is that if you have a very wide stance, just widen it out real far. Right in here, what's going to happen is as you can see at the feet, if I push him, that, that load bearing area is very thin right now. So if he gets pushed, he's gonna fall to the side or if he gets pulled, that's why we want our feet slightly off, perfect. So we have that slanted area so that it allows for three dimensional movement of the body and the center mass, right? So go ahead and bring your hands up. So what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna have it right in here. We're gonna bring these up almost like we're gonna touch our glasses, but not completely. It's gonna protect the face from strikes, knives, whatever it is. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna tuck our chin right here. The reason that we're gonna do that is, is that I can move the shoulders in order to protect. So if he moves his shoulders up and down, if I'm swinging for the face, he can move that and move it up. What he can't do is if his hand gets down and he's got his chin out, which a lot of people do, don't get sloppy on your stance. The IFS is about not getting sloppy. So if you read the CLM, it's about attention waiting on this right here and thinking about it every single time until it's imprinted into your neurology. Because if I swing and I hit that and his hand's down, he's out. If it's tucked in, He's going to keep it tucked in, keep his eyes on me, and what that's going to do is it's going to protect that jawline, it's going to clench up just a little bit, and that way, A, I don't have that target out there, B, if I hit, I'm hitting into this area, so I'm not catching the jaw completely. So for you movie stars out there that have really wide jaws, 
first off, I wish I had a really wide jaw because I'd be better looking. Second of all, you want to bring it in, tuck it, and then protect it with that shoulder. So go ahead and bring it down right in here. That's good right in there. That way, if he's got strikes or anything coming in, sometimes baseball bat or something, he's got that right up in there. His eyes are going to be able to see me. But the other good thing about it is, is that his eyes, the peripherals, they'll catch about a foot in front of him. So the footsteps that we want to take are going to be, they're not long footsteps, it's more of a shuffle. So if he has to move, he's going to shuffle forward right there. It's a very, the movement, so I'm doing the cha-cha, it's a very small movement. I know the friction around me, if it's oil, if it's a slick area, if you've got debris or something like that and you take a very long step, you can end up falling, disturbing the equilibrium, and then you got to catch up to the fight. Remember, the fight is about time. You don't, you're good. The fight is about time, right? So you don't want to have to catch up on time. So now Jordan's going to introduce us to the knife because he's the knife master. Okay, guys, so Matt's got his knife in his waistband. I like deploying my knives from a centered line position on my body. It makes it easier to protect, easier to deploy. Obviously, you want to consider timing issues when deploying any sort of tool. Um, if I'm sitting here landing blows on Matt, probably not a good idea for Matt to drop his guard in order to deploy that tool and I land a blow on his chin. So we can create distance through knees, destroying that structure, moving that person away to get that timing issue solved. So once we get the timing issue solved, we've got enough time to get an uninterrupted access. Matt's going to come down. I prefer a reverse grip on my knife. He's going to come up, deploy that knife, and you see the integrated fighting stance is all the same. Now, when Matt's having the knife in his hand, he wants the foot that is the same side of his knife forward. What this does for Matt is it gets him more reach and access to me. As, he's, as he throws that strike to use that knife, you see with the lead foot forward, he's got a lot more distance. So Matt's deployed the knife. He's in his integrated fighting stance. The foot that is the same foot that the knife is in the hand is forward. This gives Matt more access to reach me from a further distance away. So we both have a tool in our hand. Matt's knife hand foot is forward. I've got a tool in my hand and my knife hand foot is back. If I throw a strike, I can't reach Matt. With his foot forward, now he can land blows and get some edge weapon work in. Also important when you're working with the knife is to keep the guard in tight to protect the head and neck area. We don't want any sort of uh, slash injuries or stab injuries to the carotid or the, the zone of death as they call it. Keep your, your center line facing your opponent nice tight and just like this guy. See how Matt's protecting his head, protecting his neck, hunching those shoulders forward, modifying the integrated fighting stance so that he can have a better reach with that tool. So why do you, why do you go with reverse? Well, I, I like the reverse grip because if I'm using like a traditional boxing punch, right, from this distance I can't really reach, reach it, right? I'm, I'm, I'm out of your distance. But by having that reverse grip and using more of a hammer jab, I get more distance even though I'm at the same space. That makes sense? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Also, I like the reverse grip for taking away to get that nice bite with that knife. So you can work those hinges um, much better in an enclosed space. Yep. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because usually, like, I, I either carry here mm -hmm. because I like to box with the knife. Yeah. Or if I'm here, it's the same thing. It's coming in and being able to work and right, have right. it in there. Because the one good thing about this is here, I have to keep the entire hand so I'm losing the ability. If I get tangled up in there, I still have the ability to grab, to grab. and yeah. manipulate clothing and also work in based off of, because, I mean, what do we have? Right. Our fingers and our thumbs. Here we take up our fingers and our thumbs, right. ripping the knife. Right. And so while it works, here I still have fingers and thumbs. If I have to thumb the eye, right. if I have to work inside to grab an ear, right. whatever it may be. That's why I love that reverse grip. Yeah. Because you can get that. So let's move to firearms. <laughs> firearms, man. It's time for firearms. Hey guys, we're going to talk about deploying the firearm uh, with the integrated fighting stance, just showing you the, the congruity with the using hands, knives, sticks, guns. Just to show you, this is a uh, cert pistol, non-functioning training pistol, just has lasers coming out of the end. Lasers. Lasers. <laughs> okay, so again, um, Matt's in his, in his fighting stance, very stable. He's determined that he has a need for a pistol at this point. 
he's going to come down very tight to his body. I like using a lot of proprioception. That means my body is telling me where my appendages are in space. So I don't like to bring my hands away from my body. It's just harder to tell where they are. So he's going to come down to the pistol very tight, get a firm shooting grip on the handgun. What I mean by shooting grip is when that gun comes out of the holster, you can start firing it. What I don't want to do is if Matt brings a pistol out of the holster, I don't want Matt to have a grip that would be considered improper. You see how he ha does not have hit the web of his thumb as high up on the back strap as possible. This is reducing his recoil management. He's got two options at this point. He can either just try and fight through the recoil, reducing the effectiveness of his shooting, or he has to fiddle with the gun to get a proper shooting grip. Again, increasing the chance of fumbling the gun onto the ground or um, losing time as far as getting the gun deployed. Okay? So Matt's going to come down tight to his body, establish that firm shooting grip. He's going to come up as high as possible and then just slightly drop his elbow, getting the gun into line of, the, of what he's trying to shoot as quickly as possible. You want this gun to be effective on the target as fast as possible. So from here, Matt's going to bring the gun center line to his body, establishing his two-headed shooting grip. Now again, this compressed shooting position allows Matt to get good solid hits on the area of his opponent that his gun is indexed on. What I mean by that is if his gun is indexed nice and high, just like it is, center thoracic, that's exactly where it's going to hit on his opponent. But if Matt indexes that gun low, he's going to be getting lower, th lower thoracic for abdominal hits. Okay, so we want a really nice high index on that gun. Matt's going to drive that gun straight to where he wants to shoot, and he's going to be picking that front sight up as the gun is traveling towards the target, getting more time on the sights so you get a better sight picture at the end and have more accurate, effective fire. Perfect, just like that. And you see Matt's stance is very, very stable. He's got his shoulders kind of rolled over again, protecting his head and his jaw from any sort of blows. Excellent. The center line of your body should be facing your target. Think of your belly button as the muzzle of the gun. Wherever your belly button is pointed, that's exactly where the muzzle should go, center line on your body. Perfect. Matt comes back to his compressed shooting position. Again, it's nice, tight, and high. He's gonna come back to a number two position and back down into the holster. Fantastic. So let's talk about a couple of things in closing. This is your basic stance. So I'm already assuming that you kind of know how to move, you know how to do things. You're moving to the stance because you have stable equilibrium. You're moving to the stance because it's protecting the body. It's keeping the center line in. What you do beyond that, you might build off of and think of it like Legos. So if you're a boxer, this stance is probably going to work for you depending on how you actually use your hands. Versus if you're a wrestler, you're going to go to the stance, have stable equilibrium. You might take a further step back and bend at the hips, but you're going to come to this one first. Versus if you're a kicker, it's the same thing. You're going to go to the IFS first, and then you're going to switch to whatever kicking stance you may have so that you're able to use your feet, but you're coming to the stable point of equilibrium first and you're protecting the body first. So that works for weapons, right? It totally works for weapons. There, people tend to get wrapped around the axle of like, well, what about this? And I, what about this? And I've got this knife and now I've got this gun. They, ch they tend to want to like change everything. And it's like you said, it just causes problems down the road as far as time. So when you just deploy that knife and it's the same system every single time, um, there's really no change to it, right? You can strike from this with the knife, you can slash from this with the knife, whatever, whatever you want to do. Same with the handgun. And I like the, the presentation and thinking of your belly button and your hips as the muzzle. It just makes shooting instinctively and quickly very, very effective because all I have to do to shoot something very quickly and effectively is just orient my, my IFS, my integrated fight stance, to that thing. And I'm going to be ensuring adequate hits on a torso sized target. The thing about martial art is, and whether it's shooting or knife work or you know the famous bow staff or whatever it is, is that the more that you use this every single day in your day-to-day -day life, when you're getting plates, when you're fixing dinner, whatever it is, the more that you're moving through this, the more that you're training your martial art every day. Because you only go to martial art class maybe once or twice a week, but you're picking up plates all the time. So the more that you do this as you build into your daily routine, the more successful you're going to be. So, I'm Matt. I'm Jordan. Thanks for watching. Ready? Ah, just oh, kidding. Shit. <laughs> <laughs>
got to come in closer. I know how far you are, and it's not going to look good on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> the experience beyond the application of technique is one of the most important things for inoculating them from stress. When they have the consistent experience that goes into the EPL, they might not be doing everything once they get past the attention waiting phase. They might not be doing everything perfect. This is how you do.